What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Stevie the Black. It's S-T-E-V-E-E, the Black. I'm back. And, wow. It's been a minute. It's been a real minute. It's been about two weeks since I last did a video. And, uh, it's really hard for me to do a video when it's not about the Eagles, you know? Like, I could be tired, but I'm like, nope, gotta make that prediction video. Or I, or, or I gotta make that, uh, I gotta make this, talk about the Eagles real quick. And, shoot, when it comes to the Eagles, bro, I just, I just, I got the strength, you know? But when it comes to other stuff, like the NBA or wrestling or whatever, I'm just like, eh, whatever. But! And it's interesting because I say that because when I started doing this, I started doing it for wrestling. I started it with my dad and we had our own thing. But when we stopped doing that, I came on here and started doing my own stuff. But now here we are, right? So with that being said, today I got some interesting news. So for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> here's the breaking news. Here we go. All right. The Undertaker is not going to be at WrestleMania. He's not. He's done. And how do I know this? Well, I first learned it from Geekdom 101. For those of you who don't know who Geekdom 101 is, he's a YouTuber who talks about Dragon Ball Z. You know, one of my favorite shows growing up. But he has a second channel, which is called World of Geekdom, where he does movie reviews and wrestling stuff and whatever else he wants to do with it. You know, great YouTuber. You know, I follow him and stuff like that. He, he's, he's great. Go check him out. I don't know him personally, but, you know, shout out to him just to, just to let you know. So you can go check him out. Support him. But anyway, he reported on his channel today that 24 hours ago, the plan changed between him because the plan changed for him versus the undertaker because taker just can't do it he, he cannot do it anymore you know and it's a real shame you know and so who do they have replacing the undertaker for john cena none other than ray mysterio what ray mysterio ray mysterio Ray Mysterio? Like, look, I love Ray. Shoot, I kind of subconsciously called it that Ray was going to show up at the Rumble, but I was just messing around, and then, lo and behold, there go Ray Mysterio. But John Cena versus Ray Mysterio? It's like, really? Like, nothing against Ray, but I don't want to see that. And I know a lot of people are like, bro, they're late, way late with the Undertaker-John Cena match. But it's like, this is what you get for waiting so long. You could have did, you could have did it last year. You didn't have, to. <sighs> but no. Vince wanted to put over Roman Reigns. He, and look, I got nothing against Roman. I like Roman. I'm a Roman Reigns fan. But come on, Vince, you basically blew it. You blew it. You blew it. So, we're getting Rey Mysterio versus John Cena. If you saw SmackDown tonight, you know John Cena is going to be in the Fatal 6 way now for the WWE Championship. He's not going to win. He's going to think, oh, God, I have no shot at WrestleMania now. And then Rey Mysterio, I guess, is just going to come out on Raw or SmackDown or wherever John Cena is. And it's just like, Rey, Rey Mysterio. But back to The Undertaker. Again, I got nothing. I got no problem with Rey. I love Rey. I'm glad Rey's coming back. But Rey Mysterio, John Cena, I love wrestling. I love the WWE. But even I don't want to see that. I mean, oh my God. But anyway, back to The Undertaker. You know, it's it's really sad, really, ending it like this for him. You know, like this. I mean, yeah, last year was the perfect ending for him. You know, putting the hat and the glove and the jacket in the ring. And saying, this is it, I'm done. Well, this is what it appeared to be. And then we got the rumors of him facing Cena. And, and I was kind of happy about it. 
because first I'm like, bro, there's no way you can top that goodbye, right? But at the same time, I was happy about it because last year WrestleMania was at Orlando, which I'm only about 30 minutes away from that. But I didn't go to WrestleMania because of my brothers. So because of that, I missed now The Undertaker's last match. I was happy. I'm like, whew, at least that wasn't his last match. But now that's his last match. He's done. He's over. And I'm like, to end like this, though, like this, just, hey, Vince, I can't do it no more. I can't. That's, that sucks, bro. It just sucks. Like, oh, it sucks. <sighs> but if I was the WWE, how do I handle this? Well, I would, the Monday Night Raw, before WrestleMania, I would announce that The Undertaker will be making an appearance at WrestleMania. Right? He's going to have some kind of appearance. We don't know. Obviously, we're not stupid. So we know it's going to be him coming out saying he's retiring. But they're just going to play it off as, what's The Undertaker going to say? You know, what's he coming to WrestleMania for, right? The problem is, where do you put it at WrestleMania? Do you put, you can't really put it at the beginning of WrestleMania because that's going to be awkward. I mean, you can't put it at the end because you know Roman Reigns is going to win and Vince isn't going to want to spoil Roman Reigns' moment. So it's like, where do you put it at? And you can put it before the championship match between him and Roman and Lesnar. You can put it somewhere in the middle, but somewhere they can figure it out. Probably before the main event. You put it out there that Taker comes out and he just says, you know, the demons have called me back to the dark side. It's time for me to go and not for myself to finally rest in peace or whatever like that. And then that's it. So he goes away, you hear the gong, and then, you know, he's gone, and then they get the main event going on. Then, the next night on Raw, kind of like for Ric Flair, like for Daniel Bryan, it says The Undertaker says goodbye. Or, or even better, it can say Mark, uh, darn it, what's his last name? I can't remember. Mark, whatever his last name is. Mark says goodbye to WWE, right? Or the Undertaker says goodbye. Whatever you want to say. Probably just put Undertaker says goodbye. So then, the final segment of Monday Night Raw, you get the gong, Undertaker's in the ring, but instead of the Undertaker, it's Mark, the man behind the character. And he comes out, and everyone stands in ovation. Undertaker! Undertaker! Undertaker. You do that, the crowd's gonna do it. He can go on about how he got into the business, you know, how he fell in love and how he would never leave Vince's side during the Monday Night Roars. How whenever Vince needed something, he would go to The Undertaker or he would come to me or whatever. Taker can do all he wants to do and says, guys, I'm at peace with this decision. I'm good, I'm done. And then you, just like with Ric Flair and them, you have everybody on the ramp. But this is The Undertaker. You have everybody on that ramp. And everyone is just clapping, bro. And I don't know if you want to have the gong, the gong, and maybe one last time, Taker goes in the ring and goes like this, where he gets on his knees and goes, goes like that. And then the camera just fades to black. And then that's it. That is how you send The Undertaker off, because there's really no other way to do it, really. That's the perfect way, in my opinion. Now, if The Undertaker could go for one last match, how would I do it? You know, how would I do it? This is how I would do it. And I know it's kind of crazy, but you know I'm kind of crazy. This is how you, I would do it. I would have, would have had The Undertaker win the Royal Rumble. Would I? Huh. No. Save it for Shinsuke Nakamura. You know what? No. I would keep it as it is. I would have Roman Reigns win the Elimination Chamber. Same exact way that he did. But instead of having Braun Strowman attack him, you have The Undertaker appear in the ring. Choke slam him, tombstone him, 
last ride, give him a low blow, whatever. Sending a message, and then he looks up at the WrestleMania sign, does the whole, eh, eh, all that stuff, and never. Then the next night, he comes out and says, Roman, last year you beat me, but I want revenge. Last WrestleMania is going to be in New Orleans, where the streak died. And who was that person? None other than the Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar. So I want to take Les I want to take what Lesnar loves away from him, like how he took the streak away from me. Roman comes on, he's like, nah, bro, I won the Elimination Chamber. You don't get that right. But then you know we have the tension. Kurt Angle will probably come like, nah, bro, this this is this is a money match right here, bro. This is what we gonna do. So instead of WrestleMania, instead of it being Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, you have yet another triple threat match between Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, and The Undertaker. And since it's because of the triple threat match, The Undertaker doesn't even have to be in during most of the match. He can be on the sideline letting Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar beat on each other. And then in the final moments, he gets the pin. He gets to come in, does his thing, and gets the pinfall and becomes Universal Champion. I personally think Undertaker should have won many more titles than he should have won. I don't think he's ever been United States Champion. He, I know for a fact he's never been Intercontinental Champion. And he should have won way more World Championships than he has currently had, which is seven. And he did so much for Vince, bro. He, he, he should have been more. He should have been more champion than he should have. But he, he did. Vince was like, yo, man, we got to do this for this. Get this guy over the table. Like, all right, bro, that's what you want me to do? I got you. He didn't even. He Tate was so much with Vince that when Vince told him that he was ending the streak, Taker was just like, all right, that's what you want to do. If I was Taker, I'd be like, Vince, no, we ain't ending the streak. The streak is the next big thing. Matter of fact, the streak is as equivalent, if not a little bit more important, than the WWE Championship match in the main event. It is. Because the next to who's in the main event, it was who was challenging the Undertaker to try and end the streak. You know, Addy, you know, he watches wrestling too. He goes, well, you have to end the streak for an up-and-coming guy. And I'm like, no, you don't. Because just being in the match with the Undertaker is a privilege of itself. Having to up your game to try to end the streak, but never being able to do it, then you can be, hey, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Undertaker, bro. Now I want that WWE Championship. That's just as big. You don't got to win. But that's how I would have did it. Then Tate could have come out. He could have said, I'm done. I'm retired. I retired as champion. And then he could have gone the same way. That's how I would have booked the Undertaker's last hurrah, last match. Because I think that's how he should go out. But it is what it is. Taker is officially done. Not officially, unofficially done. You know, it kind of it, it kind of hurts. It kind of saddens. Because ever since WrestleMania 24, I have been the biggest Undertaker fan ever. Like, I remember that. That's back when I still thought WrestleMania was real. And I remember I just hated Edge so much. I hated Edge, bro. And I was so glad that the Undertaker won. And that he became the world heavyweight champion. And ever since then, I was like, yo, takes my boy, bro. Like, before that, it was Stone Cold and The Rock. Wasn't nobody else but Stone Cold and The Rock. But then I saw Taker beat Edge. I was like, nope, I'm hooked. Hooked. I don't even remember how it was. What was which WrestleMania? WrestleMania 24 was in 2008. And we were 2018. So I was 12? 11 going on 12? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hooked, line, and sinker. And ever since then, bro, I've been the biggest Undertaker fan, bro. I mean, uh, when I play WWE 2K18 or WWE video games, I have, sorry, I have two modes. I have my normal mode, and then when I do WrestleMania, I have my quote-unquote Undertaker mode, you know? You know, I made my own streak and my own list of people who I beat. And I remember the day the streak ended, bro, I was like, no, no. No, I was so upset when the streak died. I was like, I can't believe it. There's some guy on there who kind of looks like me going like this. My dad always says that to me because that's what my face looked like when the streak ended. I was like, oh my God. I wasn't even paying attention to the main event, which was Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, and, and uh, Dave Batista or Batista because I'm just like, the streak is over. The streak is over. The streak is over. Oh my God, the streak is over. Like, it just didn't feel right to me, bro. I was so happy whenever I got to see the Undertaker on screen. It was just, and now he's done, bro. So now, obviously, Tate goes into the Hall of Fame the next year. And I mean, the next year. Who inducts him? Maybe Kane. Maybe Vince. Maybe Sean. Maybe Triple H. 
one of those people. And then WrestleMania 35, I don't know where it's going to be at, but WrestleMania 35 will be the last time that we see The Undertaker. Because you know how they have the Hall of Fame inductees, you know, come out on the ramp so we can celebrate them one last time. The gong will hit. We will see The Undertaker for the very last time. And then that's it. It's over. So next year will be the last time we see The Undertaker officially in the, in the WWE. And it's like, bro, we never got Sting versus The Undertaker, which could have happened. You know, we never got Cena versus The Undertaker. I would have loved to see that. I mean, never got The Rock versus The Undertaker. Could have had that when The Rock came back instead of John Cena. Which, you know, the match, the match of 28 was good, you know, but <sighs> so many things you could have did. I know John, I know Vince McMahon called the Stone Cold Steve Austin the greatest WWE superstar of all time. Like, when you think of that Mount Rushmore of the WWE, you got to have Hulk Hogan on it. You got to have Stone Cold Steve Austin on it. Because Hulk Hogan put wrestling on the map. You got to have Stone Cold Steve Austin on it because he is the one. He was a star of the Attitude Era. Well, him and The Rock, really, but he was the guy in the Attitude Era. You got to have John Cena because of his popularity with the kids and everything. And the fourth guy I would put is, uh, or you can have The Rock either way, whatever. The fourth guy I would put would be The Undertaker. And we're talking Mount Rushmore for WWE, not for wrestling, but for WWE, Undertaker's on that Undertaker's on that list. He's on that mountain because there is no greater WWE superstar than The Undertaker. And it's just sad the way it ended. I wish I could have seen the match, but it is what it is. So now we can officially say thank you, Taker. Um, that's all I gotta say. Next week, the and I promise, I promise. Depending on the whole wild well, work schedule thing goes, but I promise you, next week, wrestling reviews come back. Depending on which NBA games are on, I'll I'll, I'll do that, and maybe I'll do a who I think will win the NBA finals and all that stuff. But I promise you, normal content for NBA and WWE come back next week and uh, that's pretty much about it I don't got nothing else to say thank you Taker and uh, wow this is long this is about 17 minutes about to be 18 minutes uh, yeah that's about it so if you're not down with that I've just got three words for you thank you Taker peace out